Hello, everyone. I'm Nikita Joshi. And I'm Matthew Lake here. And together, we will present our paper, A Design Framework for Contextual and Embedded Information Visualizations in Spatial Augmented Reality. This work was done with Daniel Vogel and Jian Zhao at the University of Waterloo. Spatial Augmented Reality, SAR for short, is a type of augmented reality that places digital content in the physical environment without the use of a head-mounted display. And SAR has been achieved typically in the past through projection mapping, as seen through systems like Beamatron and the Room Alive Toolkit. This creates some new opportunities for information visualizations. SAR does not require people to wear or shift their attention to a different device, which can enable more ad hoc or implicit interactions. Since digital content becomes part of the environment with SAR, visualizations are always available and much more pervasive. And it is able to show the same visualizations to multiple people simultaneously. Visualizing data in the environment with SAR has been done in a few applications, like for collaborative games or to visualize inventory data in a warehouse, but we believe it will become much more common in the near future. Situated, embedded, and physicalized visualizations that have a tight coupling between the underlying data and the physical location in the environment are becoming much more common. Visualization frameworks, pipelines, and typologies are all useful tools to aid in the design of visualizations. AR Canvas, for example, is a framework for creating pervasive and embedded information visualizations for augmented reality. However, we believe a SAR-specific framework is still necessary to address the challenges related to coordinating and sharing views between people, the lack of floating views, as well as this emphasis on context-driven interactions. So we create a design framework for creating embedded information visualizations in SAR. The framework captures the user's intent, interaction, and six environmental and visualization factors represented as a Venn diagram. An associated design process shows how the framework can be used to generate new visualizations and describe existing visualizations. First, we'll describe the user's intent, which represents the goals, motivations, and desires of the people in the environment. This is typically done through a user intent statement, like, I want to keep track of what's stored in my personal cabinet. Through the user intent statement, we can make educated guesses and inferences about other factors. So for example, because this mentions a personal cabinet, we could guess that maybe the location is an office. Next, there are six factors that establish context for the visualization and define the visual characteristics of the actual projected content. The location describes where the visualization is going to be shown, like an office. Time is when it will be shown, uh, like during a meeting. People describes who is present in the environment that may be able to see or interact with the visualization, such as coworkers. The object is the specific surfaces in the environment on which the visualization is placed, like the drawers of a cabinet. And this factor is the only factor that is part of both the environment and the visualization. Data is the underlying information that is conveyed by the visualization. And the form describes the visual form, like the color, shape, and other elements related to the visual encoding. Last, we have interaction, which describes how the user can interact with the SAR visualization. This can be both explicit or implicit and done through many different input modalities, like voice or touch. Each factor has a set of properties describing specific aspects of the factor. Location has properties like owner, function, and lighting. Function represents whether the location is a kitchen space, a bedroom space, a bathroom space, and so on. Form has properties like level of abstraction, visual encoding, color, shape, and anchor. Level of abstraction represents, for example, whether you're showing a bunch of individual data points, or whether, for example, you're showing a single color to represent an average of a whole bunch of data. Factors and properties can influence and inform the design and effects of other factors and properties. For example, the function of a location might suggest that there'll be certain objects that we can expect at that location, or that people might be doing specific activities associated with that location. 
By designing the form to have colors that contrast with that of the underlying object, it can make the resulting visualization easier to view. And if the visualization is going to be displayed in a public location, it might make sense to use a high level of abstraction to help preserve the privacy of the data owner. Here's a picture of the framework with some example properties for each factor. See the paper for further discussion on different properties. To use our framework to generate exemplar applications, we followed an associated process. At each stage of the process, we considered constraints and considerations. In other words, we pick aspects to focus on and also consider limits that the designer must work within. We also consider what factors need to be fixed or variable. A factor is fixed if it's context independent and non-interactive once the visualization has been placed in the environment. Otherwise, it's variable. Uh, the process involves moving through the framework figure based on color. So we start with user intent, then move to environment, then move to visualization and interaction at each stage, considering how the factors will influence each other, narrowing down the problem space, and refining the design of the visualization. We created 18 exemplar applications to demonstrate different aspects of the framework, and now we'll briefly highlight three important examples. We mocked up each of the exemplar applications using envisionment videos that we created with post-processing software. In this first application, the visualization reminds somebody of up an upcoming meeting uh, while providing relevant details about the meeting. As it gets closer to the meeting time, the visualization gets less transparent and moves to a surface closer to the person. So at 30 minutes, the visualization is on the far wall. At 15 minutes, it moves to the closer wall. And then at five minutes before the meeting, the visualization moves to the desk in front of the person. And it can be dismissed at any point with a remind me later voice command. In reference to the framework, the object surface being used and the transparency of the form depend on time. The second application shows how differently shaped surfaces can display the same underlying data in unique ways. In this case, the data is information about a person's schedule that they might want to see as they return from their lunch break. Uh, in this visualization, different colors represent different types of tasks. For example, pink represents meetings. And so here's some of the different ways that the information can be presented. So in this first video, we have a bar chart where each bar is represented in a different banister of the overall banister. In the second video, we have a pie chart being shown on a circular table. And in this third video, we have a linear heat map being shown on a windowsill. So in reference to the framework, the form's visual encoding and style are based on the shape of the corresponding object surface, and there's a different level of abstraction associated with each chart type. In this example, pictographs on cabinet drawers show what objects are stored inside. This view updates as objects are added and removed from specific drawers. When a stranger approaches, the icons will switch to show abstract lines to help preserve privacy. And the icons will reappear once the stranger leaves. When we think about the framework, the object function informs the data theme, in this case, the object stored, and the people's relationships of strangers will suggest the form's level of abstraction, in this case, showing icons versus abstract lines. We created a total of 18 different applications using our framework, which can be viewed at sarinfoviz.github.io. To summarize, we create a new design framework for leveraging context and surfaces in the environment for SAR visualizations. The framework is composed of the user's intent, interaction, and six environmental and visualization factors, which we use to generate and describe several applications through envisionment videos. Thank you so much for listening, and we're happy to take any questions.